Hi everyone and welcome to NameHero.com. This is our VPS performance and optimization video, which is part of our VPS Hosting 101 course on our blog. So if you're watching this video on one of our partner sites, such as YouTube or our Facebook channel, uh, make sure you check it out at NameHero.com slash startup. And from there, you'll have the option to select our new courses section, and then you can enroll in VPS Hosting 101. The purpose of this course is to teach others how to best use their VPS VPS hosting. It's um, a lot of internet entrepreneurs and webmasters, they know they need a VPS, but they don't really know how to go about setting it up and a lot of them can get overwhelmed. So therefore we've created this 100% free course that allows you to jump in and understand all the specific aspects behind VPS hosting. Now of course our team is standing by 24-7, seven days a week, 365 days a year, uh, more than willing to help you out. So if you have any trouble, you always have our team at your full disposal. I still think it's important to provide you with a good education though. Even if you don't want to do these performance optimizations, your server is going to be fast, but it will be faster if you do. So I'm going to walk you through a couple things just to, to make your um, VPS faster and uh, talk a little bit about when it comes to benchmarking. Okay, so right now I'm on my uh, Name Hero client interface and I'm going to navigate now to my VPS server and access it where we can install WordPress because I, I feel like 98% of our customers use WordPress in some fashion or another. So if I show a performance optimization by WordPress, um, then we're able to um, you know, cover a lot of bases. So I'm testing on uh, my Hero 2 Gigabyte server right here. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to grab my login details here. For those evildoers out there, please ignore this because after this video is made, I'm going to be changing them. Okay, so I'm going to click on Web Host Manager. I can proceed because it is private. It um, just doesn't have a secure certificate since it's on this IP. I'm going to enter root and password, and we are now in here. Okay. So if you've been following along in our video series, we've talked about um, you know, how to add websites. Um, so you, this video is assuming that you have a website added to your server. So you can see here keydiets.com was one we added. So if we click it, we can see there's no content on it. Um, but what we want to do is we want to go ahead and install WordPress on there. So I'm going to click to log into cPanel. Take a second to load, and then I'm going to go down here to WordPress and we're going to install it. Now I hope I have my soft delicious package on here. We're just going to use everything default. Okay, and it installed. Last time I attempted this I didn't have my package loaded correctly. Um, and we're getting a service unavailable error. Um, so let's see what's going on with that. But we need to, uh, this is the first thing we want to do is just, we just want to be able to get a benchmark. And it's trying to um, directly log in here. So that's why we're getting that. So let's go back to key diets. It looks like we're moving a little bit faster than our WordPress can move. Okay, but so now I've just installed a base copy of WordPress. And for this instance, I'm not going to do any customizations. I've got no plugins, no caching, nothing. Um, we're just going to do outside of the box um, performance testing. So I want to leave everything as same as we can. So now we're going to go over here to webpagetest.org. This is just a generic speed test that's out there. I'm going to enter our URL to our WordPress blog. I'm going to test it from Virginia in Chrome and start the test. So a lot of these tests, uh, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of them because I feel like the, the free ones you don't get as much. If I was to install Apache or Apache uh, benchmark on on of my servers, I would probably get a little bit more um, of an accurate viewpoint. So that's maybe something you want to do, but we can discuss that at a later date. Um, but you can see here my website, my performance is pretty good. Our, First byte time is a little bit slow. Um, we can see at 0.69 seconds, but you can see it's it's still not not too bad. Um, our load time is 1.5 seconds, so it's not horrible, but it's still not as good as I think we can get it. Um, so let's um, so now this gives us our benchmark. This gives us our, our first test. So we're going to leave that. Now let's. Um, Let's go do some optimizations. So the first thing we want to do is go over here to our web host manager and we want to look at our database. So we are going to go over and type in Maria, 
MySQL Maria database upgrade. And we're going to look, we are running Maria 10.1. Now, I like Maria database over MySQL. Now, those of you that are not familiar, Maria database is a drop-in replacement for MySQL. So it's, um, it's pretty much the same as MySQL, but it, it's better performing, okay? Um, and you can, see, you can see under some of these new features, it, it says improved performance and speed, new query optimizer, faster joins, more storage engines, PAM support. 10.1 um, improved DynoDB performance, union alls, can be executed without a temporary table. So basically look at it like MySQL on steroids. Um, it's now coming standard with Web Host Manager, so if you just got your VPS from us at Name Hero, then it's already um, going to have Maria database instead of MySQL. So it's the people that really, that, uh, that um, originally started MySQL are now doing Maria database. So that's kind of where things are heading. Uh, so if your scripts say they, they need a MySQL database, they will work with this. And so that's including um, WordPress. Okay, so now I, I wanna go in and we wanna optimize that a little bit. So I'm gonna open up my terminal. Okay, once you are SSH'd in, then you want to edit your my.cnf file. Now this is your configuration file for your Maria database server. So I'm going to use nano to edit it. So I'm going to type in nano slash etc slash my.cnf. Okay, now I'm going to have a couple options, but the only one that we're, the only one that we're concerned with right now is the inodb buffer pool. So we're going to see right now I've got this set at 128 megabytes. I actually increased this. Um, this is going to be a better performance than our initial um, page load uh, that we had at first. Um, as a general rule of thumb, they normally say to go 80% of the RAM inside of the server. So if the server has two gigabytes of RAM, which this one does, or uh, 2,000 megabytes, then 80% of that would be about um, 1,600 megabytes. Um, or, or give or give or take around there. Um, now that's going to give us 20% uh, of the RAM left over. So a lot of this depends on you want to make sure you have enough RAM for the operating system to, to still operate as well as cPanel and Web Host Manager. Um, so in a 2 gigabyte of RAM server, I might not want to go quite as high as 80%, but it's really up to you. It's really up to you what you leave it at. Um, I'm just going to test it at 800 megabytes. 800 megabytes and then we can see as it goes along so not um, almost 40 percent ish around there um, but again the general rule of thumb is about 80 percent i'm gonna go a little bit more conservative because it does have cpanel on here um, so that's what we're going to set this to i'm going to exit out click yes to save it and um, that's what we're going to do now after we edit that we have to reboot our mysql server so i'm going to type in mysql and i'm going to do it right here in web host manager we can also reboot this on the command line but i'm trying to keep this as newbie and as um, simple as possible you can see it restarted successfully so now if that one optimization let's go back over here to our speed test and you can see we did pretty good but still not quite where i would like it so we're going to rerun the test and see where we are um, it takes, this is a bad thing I don't like about these tests, is it takes, you have to wait until your time in line um, to start uh, the next test, but it, so it just takes a second. Now, I also like to tell people, you know, take some of these tests with a grain of salt because they're third party and yada, yada, yada. Um, but look, this is much better. Now, we've got a B on our, our first byte time now, um, more so than C. So it rendered... Um, actually a good bit faster um, just by increasing that buffer pool size. Uh, it got us to about um, 0.500 milliseconds, so about half of a second it rendered the page, whereas before it was over a full second. So that just that one optimization makes a really big difference. And, you know, I, I'll sit here and hit this a couple times depending on how backlogged it is. Um, but just to see how that really works. Now, if I go back into my web host manager, I can click on or I can type in status here and I can watch the status of this server and make sure I'm not reaching anything critical here as I've upped that and you can see I'm not I'm getting all greens here still um, if you have an active server that with a lot of stuff going on you know you don't want to go switching this stuff on the fly you want to do it um, during your non-peak hours and, and essentially it's best to do this um, it's best to do this during your um, initial configuration of the server okay so we're just gonna leave it at that that's pretty you know that's a pretty good increase just for increasing the buffer pool size to 800 megabytes um, of that um, you know again we have two gigabytes of RAM in our example server um, and so we have that 800 megabytes for our buffer pool size 
So the next optimization we want to do is enable PHP FPM. So that's the Fast Process Manager. And Web Host Manager now has this in there by default. It's just not turned on by default. So let's go back to Web Host Manager. And the cool thing about the new version of Web Host Manager, if you've, now if you've got an older VPS, this might not be in there yet to you upgrade your Web Host Manager. But the cool thing is it's got a multi-PHP editor in here. So we can type in multi and see the multi-PHP manager under software. This is cool because you can run multiple versions of PHP um, on your domains. So as you can see, keydiets.com is the one we're playing with right now. And our native version is PHP 7. Um, everyone should be using PHP 7 by now. If you're not, then you need to make sure that all your scripts are combat compatible and that you do have PHP 7 installed because you're going to get a lot of performance and security um, benefits from that. But next is getting PHP FPM turned on. So I'm going to turn this on by default. Select all of these and I want to turn it on. So click turn on and I want to convert all accounts to PHP FPM. PHP FPM conversion started. Click here to view the conversion log. So it's running, it's doing its thing right now. Um, and you can see it is rebuilt. So now let's go back here, click here, and you can see PHP FPM is on. So now you have these pool options, and these are the max children, process idle timeout, and max requests. You can increase or decrease these based on the overall performance of the server. Um, I like how they put this in here because it's super easy. Just leave this the default for now, and then you can play with it later on. And I'll, I'll come out with some more documentation to explain these in details. Um, but again, just leave these default for now, but you can always go back and edit them later. But now, now watch our performance increase by just increasing the buffer pool size and now um, as we enabled PHP Fast Process Manager. Let's go rerun the test. Remember, we're at 0.5 now. We're at half a second. And that was after two concurrent tests after increasing that buffer pool size. So we gained almost, uh, we almost doubled the speed by increasing the buffer pool. Now let's see where we are um, after we enable that fast process or um, PHP's Fast Process Manager. Which again, this is a huge step forward for um, Webhost Manager. Boom. Now look at that. Our first byte time is 0.232, so 232 milliseconds. So now we have doubled our speed again by just enabling uh, PHP FPM. So just to summarize here, we started off this video, um, we had a basic WordPress install. I'm not talking about caching, I'm not talking about CDN yet, I'm just talking about increasing the uh, buffer pool size and, and then also enabling a PHP FPM. So those are tremendous uh, performance benefits that you should do right off the bat. And I'll go into other videos about how to increase your page speed um, by adding a Cloudflare CDN, by adding Cloudflare Railgun if you have eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, and I'll talk about that stuff later on. But really, the initial things you need to do is just those two things can have a great benefit. And just to show you that wasn't kind of a fluke, I'll rerun the test. And we're back in line here for a second, which is fine. Allow me to talk. Um, but, you know, that's just some pretty substantial benefits just by editing one line in, in SSH and then turning on PHP FPM. Um, just, you know, some really big jumps in speed for a default WordPress. And bam, you can see 0.227, so 227 milliseconds. So just some great performance benefits there by just two quick optimizations. So um, I recommend that you do this. Um, as soon as your server goes live, go ahead and do this. You know, do this first uh, before you start adding sites and before you have to go back and um, you know, do all this stuff later on. So let us know if you have any questions. If you need our team to help you out, we're always standing by to do that. Um, you know, be careful editing this on live servers. I can't reiterate that enough. I've seen customers that will go into a server that's production and start messing with this stuff and crash everything. Don't do that. Also, before you start going and making changes, Make sure you back stuff up. Make some copies, you know, if you're going to make changes to an, a live server. Uh, make sure you have good backups of your server just in case because you never know. Um, but, you know, that should be, um, this is a great optimization for a 2 gigabytes of RAM server. Now we're loading WordPress in 200 milliseconds. That is absolutely excellent. So let us know if you have any questions. And then if you're following along in my course, make sure you keep going to the next videos because I'm going to have a lot more material as well. So thanks a bunch for watching.